This is a tale of a boy and a girl, a pair of magical x-ray glasses, and a beautiful pearl. And how greed is a sin and we start it so early. This is a film. This film is called Pearly. This here is Leslie. And this here is Oliver. While she flies her kite, he doesn't want to be bothered with her. Soaring up in the sky, what a beautiful sight. But she doesn't quite know how to fly the kite right. She hinted to Oliver to set the kite free. But he walked away and left it up in that tree. So he went for a walk, and he didn't walk far, until he found an old man selling things in his yard. He had ships and bottles and old magazines, and an old 12-inch of Diana Ross and the Supremes. There was a beautiful snow globe. Beautiful kaleidoscope. And a beautiful accordion. But it unfortunately broke. His carelessness broke it, there was no way to deny it. The old man had a saying, you break it, you buy it. So he paid his debts and walked his way home with a broken accordion and some magazines that he stole. And in his mind, he played beautifully. To his ears, it sounded like bliss. But it truthfully, actually, sounded like this. He began to read and he read quite an amount of the magazines he got with his five finger discount. Now inside those books that he got for free, he read of the ocean and the ships and the sea and the deep sea pearls and the deep sea fish. And he wished he had a pearl, that way he would be rich. He flipped through the pages to see what he'd find. A tiny advertisement then caught his eye. The text was so small he was forced to squint. There was an ad for x-ray glasses in very fine print. He could see through walls, he could see through clothes. Would they actually work? There's only one way to know. So he spent a dollar and sealed it up and put on extra stamps for extra good luck. Leslie was out of the loop. She hadn't a clue. So when the morning time came, she asked, Who are you writing a letter to?
Oliver hadn't been inside for more than two seconds long while the doorbell sang its doorbell song. He looked down the street, and there was no one around except for a tiny package waiting patiently on the ground. continued to read until Leslie asked, Could you run an errand for me? People's clothes were now see-through. As Oliver said, Hey, did you know the kid at the apple stand has a dragon tattoo? Oliver was kind to run her the favor, but the apple that he bought was worm flavored. As an apology, Leslie baked an apple pie for the old man to eat. Oliver walked it over. The old man ate it and immediately fell asleep. Oliver wandered around and couldn't believe what he saw. A tiny fish tank built into the wall. At first it was empty, but then what a sight. He put on the glasses and the tank came to life. This is when it was brought to his attention that he was looking into an alternate dimension. And inside a tiny shell, inside that tiny tank, was a beautiful pearl, or money in the bank. Next few days, there was one thing he was thinking. The money in his wallet was constantly shrinking. And there was one thing he wanted in this world. 
So he broke in the old man's house and stole the pearl. He thought that he was all alone, but the old man was walking back into his home. And all of his days were over living as a bandit, because the old man caught him. He caught him red-handed. So he gave him back the pearl at once. And for the first time in his life, he felt like a dunce. It was strange how his life went in this direction. So he put on the glasses and looked at his reflection. This time he saw inside of his brains instead, and he realized he's been such a giant butthead. Though they know you're mine, it doesn't mean they care. And they will stand in line to line, no longer there. He went for a walk through the old dead woods and put the glasses in the earth and the ground for good. And on this beautiful day, while the sun is so sunny, he realized that love is more important than money. So here we are at the end of our story, goodbye, farewell, sure has been pearly.